and welcome on this Christmas Eve to Durham Cathedral.
us is born tells of the night that changed the world all those centuries ago when Jesus came to us in a humble stable in Bethlehem. Animals were very much a part of that first Christmas scene. According to the old Anglo-Saxon legend, animals in this country too heard the word of God. Rudyard Kipling put into verse the story of Eddie, priest of the northern saint St. Wilfred. The poem is read for us now by Patricia Brake. Eddie, priest of St. Wilfred, in his chapel at Manhood End, ordered a midnight service for such as cared to attend. But the Saxons were keeping Christmas, and the night was stormy as well. Nobody came to the service, though Eddie rang the bell. Wicked weather for walking, said Eddie of Manhood End. But I must go on with the service for such as care to attend. The altar lamps were lighted. An old marsh donkey came, bold as a guest invited, and stared at the guttering flame. The storm beat on at the windows, the water splashed on the floor, and a wet, yoke-weary bullock pushed in through the open door. How do I know what is greatest? How do I know what is least? That is my father's business, said Eddie, Wilfred's priest. But three are gathered together. Listen to me and attend. I bring good news, my brethren said Eddie of Manhood End. And he told the ox of a manger and a stall in Bethlehem. And he spoke to the ass of a rider who rode to Jerusalem. They steamed and dripped in the chancel. They listened and never stirred. While just as though they were bishops, Eddie preached them the word. Till the gale blew off the marshes and the windows showed the day and the ox and the ass together wheeled and clattered away. 
And when the Saxons mocked him, said Eddie of manhood end, I dare not shut his chapel for such as care to attend. I first met our next guest a few yards away when we did a highway program from University College earlier this year. Since then, we've become great friends, and so I'm delighted to welcome back to Highway Thomas Allen, who's going to sing for us in the bleak midwinter.
Christmas in wartime has poignant memories for many of us. We go now to the cathedral's Chapel to the Light Infantry, where Robert Hardy reads to us from the famous letter to the Times of 1915, which told of the goodwill of the battlefields at Christmas. We had rather an interesting time in the trenches on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We were in some places less than 100 yards from the Germans and held conversations with them across. It was agreed in our part of the firing line that there would be no firing and no thought of war on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So they sang and played to us several of their own tunes and some of ours, such as Home Sweet Home, Tipperary, etc., while we did the same for them. The regiment on our left all got out of their trenches and every time a flare went up, they simply stood there, cheered and waved their hats, and not a shot was fired on them. The singing and playing continued all night, and the next day, Christmas, our fellows paid a visit to the German trenches, and they did likewise. Cigarettes, cigars, addresses, etc. were exchanged, and everyone, friend or foe, were real good pals. One of the German officers took a photo of English and German soldiers arm in arm with exchanged caps and helmets. On Christmas Eve, the Germans burned coloured lights and candles along the top of their trenches, and on Christmas Day, a football match was played between them and us in front of the trench. They even allowed us to bury all our dead lying in front. And some of them, with hats in hands, brought in one of our dead officers from behind their trench so that we could bury him decently. They were really magnificent in the whole thing and jolly good sorts. I have now a very different opinion of the Germans. Both sides have started the firing and are already enemies again. Strange it all seems, doesn't it?
the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong God shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Thank you, Pat, for that reading of Longfellow's Christmas Bells. One of the joys of Highway is hearing new music. And a carol new to my ears is this one sung now by the choir, the Zither Carol. Holy Church of the 
to the hillsides now as the choir sing John Rutter's Shepherd's Pipe. I'd also like to thank this magnificent choir under the direction of their conductor, James Lancelot. And of course, we couldn't finish tonight without wishing all of you out there a very Merry Christmas.
Just to say. 